Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good couple of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the last two or three years and they seem to mainly specialise in the kind of big fruity Goza Bellina Vice Sours and a little bit of New England IPAs as well and I've had some really nice beers from both categories from this brewery so far. This is going to be review number eight under the brewery's current name and I think there were another two beers before that under the brewery's old name so I guess 10th in total from these guys but uh, like I say a really good brewery and one that I would recommend that you keep an eye out for. So for this one we are going to head up towards Gothenburg once again, Jutebor as you would say in Swedish, the Swedish craft beer capital up there on the west coast. Got to get the Gothenburg catchphrase in when we're reviewing Gothenburg beers because it is just channel tradition and for this one then we are going to return to Duck Pond Brewing. So this particular beer is called Blue Super. It comes in at 6% ABV and this one is a fruited goza containing blueberries, cherries, passion fruit and also a little bit of vanilla as well. So uh, yeah, this beer was released as part of the Low Carb Osmoskalik Assortment through System Bolaget here in Sweden for February of 2021. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed, this is as good as some of the other beers that we've had from Duck Pond Brewing previously. Um, the last beer that I had from these guys was the Single Quack, which was a New England IPA and I really, really enjoyed that beer. I was a bit disappointed that I missed the double quack in December 2020 actually. I was really hoping I'd be able to get a, a chance to try that but who knows maybe they'll re-release it at some point in the future. I'll just need to keep my eyes open. But yeah this is one of the Swedish breweries that I always keep an eye on. They were previously known as Microphone Brigariet so this is why I was saying earlier that I'd had, I think I've had two beers under the name Microphone Brigariet and this will be my eighth one under the name Duck Pond. But yeah keep an eye out for these guys. Some really nice big fruity sour beers and they're also pretty damn solid in the New England IPA category as well. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. Really curious to see how this beer turns out, particularly on the basis of the other beers I've had from them already. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Duck Pond Brewing before, and you will no doubt see more added to that list in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the swedish beers i've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's all Always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Duck Pond Brewing then, on to my brewery notes. So Duck Pond Brewing, as I mentioned earlier, were previously known as Microphone Brigariet, or the Microphone Brewery if you want to translate it into English. And this company is the brainchild of Nikola Sarsevich, who is a singer and songwriter for the band Meal and Colin, which has been making music since 1993. So the band were originally based in Urobro, out to the west of Stockholm, but then they took a break from touring and playing and then Nicola moved to Gothenburg. But in 2013 he began home brewing with his friend Christian Silva while he was studying international marketing in Hoofde, if I've pronounced that right. Um, but the two were brewing very small 20 litre batches and then Nicola went down to Berlin in Germany for a two week brewing course. After this they started the company together officially and it was based for a while in Nicola's house and at this point they were brewing 200 litre batches. They changed the name of the brewery in summer of 2019 to uh, Duck Pond Brewing because they felt it was a more kind of um, international name if you like and they thought people were kind of struggling to spell Microphone Brigariot and of course it is a Swedish word. There's quite a few breweries actually who have changed their names from kind of Swedish things into more kind of English friendly. Uh, English friendly names if you like um, but uh, yeah they were they've been gradually just kind of increasing their capacity over the um, over the last little while. In 2019 they produced around 70,000 litres and uh, they were originally produ producing most of their beer at uh, Popel's Bregory and Odd Island but they now have their own premises in Kungsten and they've just hired Magnus Lorraine as their, uh, their new brewer. So uh, yeah some exciting times ahead for these guys and as of February 2021 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced 20 
25 different beers under the Duck Pond Brewing name and I think there was somewhere around 15 or 20 uh, that were previously done under the Microphone Brigeria name. So in total these guys have produced in the region of 40 different beers. So uh, yeah, like I said, this brewery for me, are, I would always, if anyone asked me about uh, Duck Pond Brewing, I would always think of, you know, the big kind of fruity sours, the Gozes and the Bellina Vices and stuff like this. Uh, but they have been putting a few New England IPAs out there as well. And they are very solid in this style of my experience. I'm sure that I've had an Imperial Stout from these guys as well, come to think of it. I'm sure I did have one Imperial Stout from them. But these guys are also one of the co-owners of the Wizard Brewing brand, along with uh, Morion Dargan's Brewery as well. And those guys are another big kind of fruity sour brew that I would also recommend you check out. There's quite a few really nice Power breweries here in Sweden, of course, you know, Brekeriet were the ones who kind of kicked it all off. You've got Omni Pollo doing uh, these big kind of fruity beers as well. But these days you've got Duck Pond, you've got Morian Doggins, and of course their, band, their brand that they have, Wizard. Uh, you've got Fermenterana, I've got some really interesting sour beers. Urubro Brewery, who's actually have done uh, some interesting sour stuff. And then you've got Yemadal and Handwerks Brewery, who are away up in um, in uh, Shalix, away, like right next to the Finnish border. Uh, and they're a really good brewery, but they're tiny, tiny scale actually so yeah you've got a good selection of sour beers in sweden these days and i would recommend that you shop around a little bit and try things from some of the really small breweries you can find some real gems amongst the uh, the swedish craft breweries these days there's somewhere in the region of 700 breweries in the country these days but uh, yeah duck pond are very well regarded and gothenburg as i've mentioned earlier is a great craft beer city but uh, yeah that's all i can tell you about duck pond brewing for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on facebook and instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the rate beer untapped and beer advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done so um yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer itself then. Really curious about this one. So, um, yeah, as you can see, the artwork on this one is, uh, you know, pretty straightforward, actually. It is quite nice. It just looks like a little, you know, like blood drops or a little sound wave or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what it's meant to be. But like I said to you, the beer is called Blooper. It tells you there on the side there, you can see the Duck Pond Brewing symbol. You can also see my little viewfinder thing on the camera reflecting off this but like I said to you this one is a goza with blueberry cherry passion fruit and vanilla added into it I don't know if I've actually had a big you know goza berlina vice type beer like this with cherries in it come to think of it but yeah six percent ABV it contains wheat and oats and of course the vanilla in this one as well so I'm really expecting something very nice and very smooth and remember the goza is a type of sour beer originating in Germany that has a little bit of salt added into it so I think this one could be very interesting. 440 milliliter can. I think I paid in the region of like 45 Swedish kroners for this. So probably about four euros 50, um, four pounds sterling, and I guess about $5 American for those of you watching over there. But um, yeah, this I think should be quite nice. Just plain silver top can this. And like I said, the beer was released as part of the local Smoskalik assortment through System Bolaget here in Sweden for February of 2021. But now we can relax and we can have a taste of the beer. 6% Goza from Gothenburg. So, yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. Let me just shugle up the bottom in case all the wheat and oats are stuck at the bottom there. There we are. I tell you something, the aroma, I've only just had a wee whiff of the aroma there, but that smells beautiful. You can see that when we've poured this beer, it's poured with about a half finger or a third finger of a frothy, you know, kind of pink head, but that's going to fade away and just leave you with nothing. But uh, yeah, you can see that's it's only just leaving a tiny little bit of a ring around the edge of the glass there. But that looks absolutely beautiful. I don't know if the term Ribena means anything to Swedes. Um, but this really reminds me of a drink that my gran always used to give me back home, Ribena. It was a black currant juice. Um, and this, the, just the appearance of this beer reminds me of that Ribena stuff that my gran used to give me. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it's, it actually smells quite like it as well, in fairness. Strange that it's cherries and blueberries, because, yeah, as I say, Ribena was always black currants, if I remember rightly. Black currant juice. Um, although you did get different types of Ribena, of course. But um, yeah, if we're actually describing this one in terms of kind of tangible colours, if you like, I would describe this one, it's almost like a kind of blood red, almost, if you like, or a red wine kind of colour. Um, could you describe it as maroon, burgundy? 
like the Heart of Midlothian football shirt, although I need to watch because I know there's a few Hibs fans from Edinburgh like to watch the channel. Um, there's Big G and Sonny Leith who wasn't too happy with me talking about the Heart of Midlothian football shirts. But yeah, it's a nice kind of maroon uh, type colour, this beer. Uh, sort of burgundy maroon, like red wine kind of colour. I think that's a fair way to describe this one. But as I say, it reminds me of, uh, of Ribena juice. But yeah, there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the surface there, and the head, you saw it just, you saw how quickly that just kind of faded away, to be honest with you. You know, um, it's odd because, you know, usually wheat actually helps head retention from what I gather. But um, yeah, some of the, the sour beers hold their heads, some of them don't. Just depends actually but um, yeah nice looking beer this one the other thing we should comment on with this is how hazy it is and it does have a bit of a kind of natural haze to it the oats and the wheat of course are going to give you a bit of haze but I don't find this the soupy in terms of appearance I don't find this to be the soupiest and gloopiest of uh, gozas or or you know how was put the gozas and the billion of ices in these big you know modern fruit sours it's not the the soupiest and gloopiest kind of modern fruity sour that I've come across but it does go together uh, it does look pretty damn nice, I have to say. So, um, yeah, let's have a look at the aroma and just see how we get on then. Curious about this beer. <sighs> yeah, that does smell very nice. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. One thing I've always said about these gozes and billion of ices is that I find the aromas on these very straight shooting. You know, they're not the most complex of beers, come to think of it, but they... Um, yeah, they're not the most, the, I guess, yeah, they're not the most kind of complex of beers, but they really do have, um, you know, their aromas are really just very, very nice, actually. Um, yeah, it goes together. The aroma in this one just goes together extremely nicely, very, very nicely. Um, yeah, it's lovely. Um, yeah, fruity side of this beer, I think, is just, uh, it's just really, really nice. Um, where to start with this one then? It's kind of, you know, if you've had a couple of beers from, from this brewery, from Duck Pond, you kind of know what to expect and, you know, in, in a way that the likes of the beers from Fermenterana, Mario and Doggins and things like that, these big fruity sours are, you know, really distinctive actually. Um, so yeah, um, straight away with this one then, you can smell the kind of you can smell the big sort of creamy backbone to the beer. So, you know, the wheat is going to give you a big bit of creaminess to it. You can also smell on this one. This one smells a little bit thicker because it's got a nice kind of oaty character to it. A lot of these Bellina Vices and Gozas almost smell as if they're a little bit yogurty on the malty side of things. They give you that sort of petit filou um, yogurt type aroma and I get a lot of that out of this one. So you can smell that it's slightly thicker and oaty and if you take the aroma in quite deeply, um, you know, you can smell a little bit of that slightly more bitiness of the wheat, but really it's it's very, very thick and, you know, it comes across as very, very thick and almost really quite sweet. But this beer also has vanilla in it and that's just going to add to the kind of sweetness there. I've always found that vanilla and oats have a sort of antagonistic relationship in these kind of beers. They just sort of always go together. So for me, you've got this big um, sort of petty filou, yogurty, um, oaty, vanilla, wheaty backbone to this beer. Um, and you know the Goza is obviously it is a wheat based beer even the original ones there's not that many of the original German ones still around actually I reviewed I've reviewed one German Goza I think on the channel um, or at least one old school German Goza I should say I need to seek out a few more but um, yeah the aroma of this beer I think again it's it's very nice but it's it's really similar to what I've had from this brewery in the past, so it's, it's nothing surprising. I mean, what I would always say about Duck Pond is that if you're into these big fruity gozes, then, um, you know, just pick one that's got fruits that you like and you're pretty much guaranteed a good beer with it. But as I've said, with these modern fruity sours, um, and I think with sours in general, I don't find them to be the most complex beers unless they're uh, kind of lambics or they're, you know, like uh, Flanders Reds. I find those styles quite complex in a lot of ways. Um, but these modern fruity sours, if you like, are quite straight shooting, but the, the flavours that you get out of them are just, you know, spot on. They're just very, very nice. Um, but yeah, I think that covers the malty side of this beer quite, you know, quite well, to be honest. It's not madly complex. Um, so yeah, um, this beer, it doesn't have hops listed as an ingredient in this one, and I've said this before, um, quite a few of these breweries now do not put hops 
in these big fruity sours and I, I've had, there's a, there's a brewery back home in Scotland called Vault City who are getting a lot of uh, attention at the moment. They put hops in their sour beers and they're doing quite, they've got their own kind of distinct style of sour almost. Um, but you know, I think adding the hops into these beers just gives them a little bit more complexity. You do get a wee touch of grassiness coming out of this beer, which I think is, um, it's really nice. Um, it's got a really nice, um, it's, um, you know, you do get just that little bit of kind of green grassiness out of it. There's a wee bit of floral character, teeny bit of earthiness. Like, um, you do, you can smell a little bit of an almost kind of brambly type character out of this one. And that's, you know, the cherries and the, the blueberries, I think, that will be giving you that. And um, it's almost got that slightly woody, slightly earthy kind of thing there. You get a wee bit of that out of it. But you do get a wee bit of a kind of green quality to this beer too, which is quite nice. So, yeah, this is definitely... This is definitely an interesting one. So um, yeah, I like how uh, how the how that side of the beer goes together. But you know those green components that I'm talking about, the beer doesn't have hops in it, so that might well be placebo. But I do find this beer just has a little bit of a green thing going on with the um, with the with the aroma at least. But on the fruity side of things, it does it does come across as really quite interesting. So the cherries, you definitely get a bit of that kind of very juicy kind of cherry note out of this one. Um, uh, and the blue, but the blueberries, I think, normally I, f I find it quite interesting because blueberries I've always found are very, very tart. Whereas the blueberries in this, I think it's because of the presence of the cherry. Both of them are sort of making each other a little bit more juicy in a sense. But then again, you have to remember you've also got passion fruit in this one. Um, and the, pa you know, passion fruit, when you put it into a big kind of wheat based sour like this, I've always found, you know, passion fruit and mango, they give you this just very soft, um, sort of beer and they can almost come out like a sort of fruit smoothie sort of thing it really gives you a bit of that so i do wonder if the passion fruit and to a degree the vanilla in this one as well you can actually smell with this beer that the passion fruit and the vanilla as well as the kind of oaty side of things are kind of mixing in together you get that the tropical side of this beer is kind of mixing in with the vanilla and the oats and the malty side of things whereas i think the berries the cherry and the you know the cherry and the um did you see the cherry and the, the, the blueberries in this one are just kind of sitting on top a little bit and giving the beer a bit more of a juicy type thing. Um, but it's a love, as I say, it's a lovely smelling beer, this. You might be forgiven for thinking there's a few sort of strawberry, figgy, um, kind of blackcurranty type aromas out this as well. But you're always going to get that, even when it's just a single fruit um, sour beer, like I had with the, the raspberry masquerade recently from uh, from Fermenterana, even that was only raspberries in that, but you will get the impression of a few other kind of fruits in these big kind of fruity uh, goza type beers. So yeah, I mean, the, the aroma that comes out of this beer is really nice. As I say, for me, a lot of these beers are very straight shooting, um, and this one I don't think is any exception to that, but it smells absolutely lovely. So take a bit of time, ponder over the aroma before you get stuck into it, but we are going to taste this beer now. So this one is the blooper, a goza with um, blueberries, cherries, um, passion fruit, and uh, vanilla added into it, coming in at 6% ABV from Duck Pond Brewing in Kungsten in Gothenburg on the Swedish west coast. Let's get stuck in. Slanger Skull. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> That's really nice. Um, I'm just wondering, there's a wee bit yeah, there is a wee bit of sediment at the bottom of this. Because um, this one, although it doesn't look... I can see the shine on the bottom of the can, so I think it's just a wee bit. I think it is just a very kind of thin layer. What I would say about this one is, this doesn't feel quite as thick as some of the other um, duck pond beers that I've had previously. But it's certainly not lacking in any flavour, if that makes sense, compared to the other ones that I've had. So... Yeah, this is this is one of the things I've always for me, these big sour beers are more tasting beers. That's it's not something I would session. I, I love sour beers. Sour beers have really grown on me since I got a go at the Lambics, thanks to uh, Chris Contreras, American and Belgium. Um, he sent me a few Lambics and then my, my appreciation for sour beers just kind of skyrocketed after that. And then there, there was the Rodenbach as well, which I thought was lovely. Um but yeah, I love these sour beers, but you know, I wouldn't you know, it's the sort of thing I would have maybe 
I wouldn't ever go in like a sour beer session. I went to the, the Mikula Balhallen Festival and some beautiful sour beers there, but it was, I felt it quite heavy going. I think to drink lots and lots of sour beers in a session, I find that very difficult to be honest. But this is a lovely, lovely sour beer. But yeah, thumbs up to, uh, to Duck Pond Brewing for this once again. So um, yeah, where to start with this one then? Um, you know, if you've had a beer from the from this brewery before, you kind of know what to expect. And when you've had a look at the aroma, this one actually translates quite well into the, um, it translates quite well into the flavour as well. So straight away with this beer, you can feel in the middle third of your palate, you can feel the oatiness there. The oats just kind of blanket that middle third of your tongue, which is great. Um, and I think that goes together really, really nicely. So lovely big kind of oaty smoothness sitting there in the middle third of your palate. Um, if you go further back in the tongue, you can feel the, the wheatiness there. I think there's a wee tiny touch of bitiness to the wheat in this one, which I really like. Um, so yeah, you can feel middle third of your palate is a bit more oaty, whereas the back third of the palate is a little bit more sort of um, kind of wheaty, if that makes sense. But on the front half of that middle third of your tongue, you can feel the nice smoothness from the vanilla there. And again, the oats and the vanilla have a sort of kind of antagonistic relationship going on. So yeah, I think that's definitely worth noting in this beer. But it's, as I say, it's quite similar to the other ones I've had from uh, Duck Pond Brewing. But you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You can expect a solid, solid sour beer from these guys. So yeah, I like this one. As I say, it doesn't strike me as being quite as thick as some of the other duck ponds I've had, but um, it's just as good. It is just as nice. Um, yeah, I think that covers the malt base, to be honest. You can feel that the, the oatiness, I think, comes out a wee bit more the further you go into your aftertaste. It's got a little bit of a kind of dry, powdery sort of thing to it. And it's also got some nice kind of smooth wheaty notes as well, which, um, which I do like. Um, the malty side of this beer, I think, suits everything else that's going on in it, in it quite nicely. Um, so yeah, we can move on to the sort of hoppy, if you like, and fruity side of things. So like I said, this beer doesn't have hops in it, but I think there is a wee bit of a placebo effect with these beers where you still get quite a wee bit of, um, you do still get quite a lot of um, fruitiness in these beers. So, uh, or hoppiness in the beers, if you like, or some green components. So in the back corners of the palate, I think there's a wee touch of earthiness there. As you move further forward, you get a wee touch of a herbal quality and as you reach the kind of front corners of the palate, there's a tiny little bit of floral note there, but again, there's no hops in this beer, so I think all of this is placebo, but around the kind of front curve of the tongue, I find the beer is just a little touch more sort of grassy, if you like, and then you've got all the big kind of fruity notes in this beer as well. So as I always tell you, when you add fruit into the beer, I always find that the fruity, the fruit sort of suppresses a little bit of the green side of the beer. And for me, this one is quite interesting in that sense. So if you go to that border region, let's focus on this fruity side now. So if you go to that border region between um, front third and middle third of your palate, um, you know, you can feel there is a bit of the kind of oaty, you do get a bit more of the oaty kind of quality of this one. Some of the vanilla is kind of lingering there as well, but you can feel the nice kind of oaty smoothness sitting underneath the, um, the fruits on that kind of front third of the palate. And it's interesting because on top of that little bit of oatiness, it feels, you know, as I say, there's not hops in this beer, but it does feel that there's a little slightly oily kind of figgy, black currenty type flavor there. And that's just sitting on top of it. But then the actual adjuncty fruits, if you like, are kind of coming out there as well. So on that front third of your palate, on top of that flavor that I'm talking about, you can feel the kind of nice, smooth passion fruit. Like I said to you, and I, I always find that when you put mangoes and passion fruit into, um, you know, into these sort of sweet, these big fruity sour beers, it comes across as very, very soft and smooth, and it kind of interacts quite a bit with the oatiness and the kind of wheaty side of the beer, actually. So yeah, that's something that I could really appreciate about this one for sure. So yeah, um, for me, the 
tropical side of this beer, I think. It is there and you can find it, but I think it really takes a back seat to the more berry side of things for sure. Um, but I think, yeah, the, the, the passion fruit in this one does work quite well with the oats and the vanilla quality, actually. You do get some of that vanilla on that border region in there as well. And I think it kind of it becomes a little bit more prominent in the aftertaste, but in the beginning, the beer is definitely a little bit more tart and a little bit more kind of berry orientated. So, yeah, it's interesting with this one. So when you take this beer in, you do get quite a little bit of tartness out of it. Um, and it's difficult to place whether the tartness is coming more from the cherries or the, the blueberries. I think it's probably a mixture of both. So yeah, when you take it in, just behind the front of your tongue there, you do get a nice wee bit of tartness to the beer. But then, it just kind of juices up. And as I've said in previous videos, I always think the thing that makes a good sour beer um, is the transition it makes from being sharp and tart in the beginning to just being nice and juicy and smooth and fruity. And this beer, again, does it very, very well. Um, so for me, the um, fruity side of this one, when you take it in, as I say, it's I think it's it's a mix. Both of the both the the cherries and the blueberries have a sort of darker flavour to them, um, and you know they they both sit there on the front of the tongue. And I think around this kind of side edge of the tongue, you've got more cherries and you've got a little bit more of a kind of towards the kind of front tip of the tongue, you've got more of a kind of blueberry note. And then as you go around the sides, you've got a little bit more of a kind of cherry character coming out of this one. So, um, yeah, I think both, the, the, it almost feels as if the cherries and the blueberries are sort of merged as one flavour almost, but they both juicing each other up a little bit. And I think the tartness comes out a lot more in the flavour than you might think it's going to be on the basis of the aroma. Um, but yeah, I think that it, it's actually a very well balanced beer, this between the tropical side of things and the berry side of it. And it works well. So the tartness is definitely all about the berries and the sort of smoothness and sweetness of this sour is more to do with the tropical side of it. But um, yeah, as I say, this one I think goes together very, very nicely. But that's not a surprise if you know this brewery. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, I think we can leave the flavour profile there and focus on the mouthfeel now. Like I said, this one, it doesn't strike me as being as thick as some of the other Duck Pond beers that I've had before. But... Is it a nice beer? Uh, yes, absolutely. I think this one is as good as the ones we've had from uh, from Duck Pond before. The other thing to bear in mind that it could be, a, a, maybe I am just getting more used to these kind of sour beers and finding them a little bit more kind of drinkable than I did. To me, a sour beer is still a tasting beer, though I'm not going to, you know, drink loads of these. And I still share these cans, of course, as well. But, um, yeah, the, um, you know, the um, fruity, the, the fruity side of this beer is just lovely, but like I say, overall for me, there's just a little bit of tartness to this beer in the beginning, but then it smooths out really nicely. I'd describe this beer as being, you know, fairly mid-bodied. Smooth carbonation, as I say, a little bit tart in the beginning, and overall it is just um, very, very nice. So I would say in terms of IBUs, you know, I think it's, it's technically speaking, I think it's not going to have any IBUs, but I'd say it's most likely that it's got like five or six IBUs, you know, something like that. It will have just a little bit of bitterness. There's a nice kind of smooth, there is a nice little bit of smoothness to this one, which I think is great. Um, the malt base does develop a little bit of sweetness from the vanilla later on, and, you know, the oats almost give you a little bit of smoothness. It's really like a kind of yogurty base, as I said. I always say that with these kind of big Gosa Berlin of Isa type beers. So it does feel quite smooth and sweet and yogurty almost in the middle of the palate um, and then the fruity side of the beer it's quite tart in the beginning but it juices up a little bit later the, the berry side of it's giving you a lot of the tartness but then the tropical side is giving you a lot more of the kind of smoothness and building the bridge with the malty part of the beer too but overall it's another awesome sour beer from Duck Pond Brewing I really like what these guys are doing in this regard they're very solid in the New England IPAs as well and uh, I do hope that at some point we see a few more styles from these guys, like a West Coast IPA would be really interesting. You know, um, it'd be cool to see them do, you know, like an original Goza, you know, do an original Berlina Weisse, an original sort of old school uh, Goza as well. I'd love to see them have a go at some of these beers. But when it comes to these modern fruity sours, you know, 
Duck Pond are one of the brew one of the kind of go-to breweries. So yeah, thumbs up to them once again. I've really enjoyed this beer, and like I say, this is one of the breweries that I keep an eye out for in this regard. So um yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This was the blooper, a six percent goes out with blueberries, cherries, passion fruit, and vanilla added into it from Duck Pond Brewing in Kingston in Gothenburg. A really well respected Swedish brewery, one that I would recommend you check out. Thank you again for watching my reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Duck Pond Brewing and I will catch you soon with another one and I'm sure we'll review more beers from these guys in the very near future. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Make sure you check out this brewery, check out my social media and see you in the next review. Skull.